it's not looking real good right now from a technical analysis standpoint. However, there is a chance that earnings could save us and turn things around. Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and as we finished up another volatile day in the markets, the future of the stock market is becoming very unclear. It's all going to come down to the technicals and earnings. I'm going to take a look at both and see if we can figure out where the market's going to go from here. So let's get into it! The stock market rallied 3% on Monday after the UK finally got its act together. The UK decided to make a major U-turn and scrap all of their planned tax cuts. This had the effect of strengthening the British pound, and as the British pound went up in strength, the US dollar went down in strength. The DXY, which is a US dollar index, was down 1% on Monday, and when the dollar goes down, the stock market goes up. And that is why the stock market rallied on Monday. Now, this actually happened once before with the UK, and it ended up being a one-day rally. So we'll have to see if this can continue into Tuesday and the rest of the week. But honestly, with earnings coming up, it's really going to come down to earnings, not so much the UK. The stock market will be far more focused on what's happening here in the United States. And we do have some major, major earnings being reported this week, including Tesla and Netflix. But before we get to those, let's take a look at the stock market technicals and see where the stock market might go from here based upon the technicals. Taking a look at the S&P 500, and I'm using SPY ETF for this, we can see how the S&P 500 is currently trading right in between the 10-day and 21-day EMAs. Now, the candles are kind of all over the place. They're not really bullish. They're not really bearish. We have no idea which way it's going to go based upon the candles. Uh, the SPY is also stuck between two support and resistance levels. So we're not really getting any help there. The MACD is very close to zero, just mildly bullish. Really no help there. The RSI is right at 45. 50 is neutral, so again, no help there. The technicals right now are extremely neutral, and we have no idea which way they're going to go. Taking a look at the longer term technicals on the weekly chart, it does remain quite bearish. And while we are getting a little bit of a reprieve here over the past four weeks, there are no signs that this bear market is going to end anytime soon. So because the technicals are neutral right now, if you're looking for signs of a bottom, you're not going to find it in the technicals. Rallies so far have been met with very little buying enthusiasm. That is, there's been very little heavy volume on the buy side. In other words, there's very little volume when stocks are rising, but there's a lot of volume when stocks are going down. And what that points to is more people are selling than buying, which is bearish for the markets. Lowry, which is the nation's oldest technical analysis service, said historically such patterns are a sign of a stock market that is vulnerable to further intermediate term downside. In other words, we don't really know what's going to happen over the next few days or weeks, but over the next few months, the market does look like it wants to continue to go down. A simple indicator of momentum called the advanced decline line fell to a new bear market low last week. And that reinforces the market's fragile state and suggests that there's further downside for stocks. So when it comes to technical analysis right now, the short-term technicals are neutral, giving us no indication where the market's going to go. And the longer-term technicals are bearish, pointing to the market going down. It's not looking real good right now from a technical analysis standpoint. However, there is a chance that earnings could save us and turn things around. Tesla, Netflix, and many others are set to report earnings this week. Tuesday after the close, Netflix reports earnings along with United, which is the first of the airlines. Then Wednesday before the open, we've got ASML, which is a semiconductor company. We've got Procter & Gamble, which will be more in the retail space. We've got another bank, Ally, which I'm pretty heavily invested in. And then Wednesday after the close, we've got Tesla. And really, that is the one big earnings that's happening this week that everybody is going to be looking at. 
Tesla could absolutely move the markets in a significant way. We also have IBM and Las Vegas Sands, which you might be invested in. Then on Thursday, we've got AT&T, American Airlines, and then after the close, Snap. And then on Friday, we got Verizon and American Express. Now, when it comes to Netflix reporting Tuesday after the close, they have already reported back-to-back -back quarters of subscriber losses. But they also said back in July that they were forecasting that they were actually going to add 1 million users in Q3. Now, it should be noted that if Netflix is successful in adding 1 million users, these might be on their ad supported tier, meaning these people are going to be paying less money for the service. So adding a million subscribers today is not the same as if they had added a million subscribers, say, last year. The profits and the revenue from that are going to be significantly lower. So one, we have to see if Netflix did, in fact, add a million subscribers like they thought they would. And two, we have to see just how much revenue and more importantly, earnings those subscribers actually result in for Netflix. There's a lot of unknown. We don't know what they're going to do. So we'll have to see. But ultimately, that comes out Tuesday after the close. Yet Wednesday after the close, it will be completely overshadowed by Tesla. Now, Tesla stock is already facing a lot of pressures. One, the company's vehicle deliveries fell far short of Wall Street's estimates. Two, their backlog is declining, meaning they no longer have a huge amount of orders that are yet to be delivered. And three, Elon Musk is now planning to buy Twitter, meaning he will most likely have to sell his Tesla shares in order to afford the purchase. So all of these things are weighing heavily on Tesla stock, and we have seen Tesla stock go down in share price significantly over the past few weeks. Now the question is, what happens to earnings? It's very possible that everybody is expecting Tesla's earnings to be horrible, and therefore they're gonna have a very easy time beating those expectations, which in turn could cause the share price to go up after earnings. Keep in mind that even if a company has really bad earnings, so long as they beat the earnings expectations, the share price will go up. So if the expectations are for earnings to be horrible and earnings are only bad, we can expect the share price to go up. Now, taking a look at earnings on a macro level, the earnings apocalypse that everybody has been fearing has not yet materialized. The earnings apocalypse is this belief that earnings are going to be horrible due to this upcoming recession. And as a result, that's going to cause a major sell-off in stocks. That will turn into extreme capitulation, which is selling stocks for major losses. That will ultimately lead to this final epic crash in the bear market, which in turn will also signal the bottom of the bear market. Now, people had hoped that would happen during the Q2 earnings. It did not. Now people are hoping that will happen during the Q3 earnings. 35 companies have reported third quarter earnings so far. And of that group, 68% have beat earnings. Now that's lower than the prior four quarter average of 78%, but still higher than the historic average of 66%. And just like in the second quarter, many people are anticipating an earnings apocalypse for Q3. The evidence so far, though, suggests a contraction, but not an apocalyptic collapse. There were downward revisions in Q3, and there have been similar downward revisions in Q4. Technology, for example, has gone from an expected gain in earnings of 8.6% on July 1 to a decline in earnings of 0.4% as of right now. That's a 9% decrease in expectations. Because of that 9% decrease in expectations, if these technology companies come in and their earnings somehow increased and did not decline, we could see these technology stocks rise and that could bring the entire S&P and NASDAQ up with them. 
The bottom line when it comes to earnings is that the market is already priced in a much lower multiple, that is lower P.E. ratios. They're anticipating a slowdown in the economy. Everyone is anticipating that earnings guidance will be slashed for Q4, and that could be what triggers another leg down in the market. On the flip side, if earnings come in even close to expectations, that could trigger the same rally that we saw after the June lows when we also expected an earnings apocalypse and yet it did not happen. So in summary, if earnings come in at expectations, we can expect stocks to go up. And if earnings come in a little below expectations, or more importantly, if these companies slash their Q4 or year-end guidance, then we can expect stocks to go down even if the expectations were beat. If you learned something and got something out of this video, be a good friend and share this video with your friends and family so that they can learn what to expect with earnings as well. And make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to know more about where the market is going and what the fundamentals look like, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.